I will be honest with you, I have a soft spot for film. While I'm not the biggest fan of the icky chemical process of developing film, but since the very first time I picked up a digital camera, I found myself trying to replicate the tonality, aesthetic and the overall look of film. As I learned about photography and hopped from software to software, at some point I came across Dehancer. I gave the trial a trial and honestly I was impressed with the results. But being a tinkering nerd like I am, I wanted to develop my own process and do things my way. Unsurprisingly, our paths crossed again. As I was asked whether I would be interested in reviewing Dehancer for Affinity Photo and DaVinci Resolve. Would I? Now I think it's very important to set the expectations correctly from the very beginning. Emulating how film, its dyes and light work is an incredibly incomprehensively complex process. And I'm not sure that anyone has done it yet, as that would make film obsolete. There's an amazing talk by Danielle Siragusano of Filmlight about the lengths they went in an attempt to copy a certain film look and behavior. It's definitely worth a watch, I'll link that in the description. Now what I mean by look and behavior, here's how I see it. There's trying to copy the film looks and there's trying to copy how film behaves. Copying the look of fully developed printed frame of something that was shot on film is an impressive feat on its own. But at this point in time it could be done by using a LUT, a couple of nodes, a couple of tweaks and a bit of elbow grease. It's still really hard work as shown by Steve Yedlin, uh, more links in the description. But by now we are accustomed to being tricked that something was shot on film, while in reality it was just made to look like it was shot on film. Let's call it matching for now, as the best match is achieved when comparing something shot, developed and printed using film to something that has been shot on digital and post-processed to copy that appearance. This matching can only be done at a certain exposure, for example. If you would change the exposure on your film sample, you would have to do a lot of tweaking on your digital footage to match, and it wouldn't be a matter of just changing exposure somewhere in your node setup. The way crystals absorb light and create grain, in turn forming an image, the way that different dye layers interact with each other, the way that color purity changes with density, the way that light bounces off the backing to create halations around lights. It goes on and on. All I know that I do not possess the knowledge to understand a hundred years of worth of research, development and engineering that went into the final product that film is today. So, managing expectations. While I'm sure that some behaviors can be emulated, it's difficult to expect the software package to emulate film in its entirety. Another important thing to note is that Dehansa is not a developer like, uh, for example, Darktable, Lightroom or AGX. You cannot take a camera native RAW file and produce a JPEG with it. Dehansa is something that happens in post, after the image is formed. Now with all that in mind, let's have a look at how well it replicates the film look. Let's do a little matching exercise, shall we? I've got this very lovely photo from Rhaegar He. I'll try to match it as closely as I can within a sensible time frame. I've got this visually somewhat similar frame I captured quite a while ago. I think it'll do just fine for this example. Now I need to load the ARW file into Affinity Photo because that's my preferred digital image editor. Dehancer comes in a plugin form for a bunch of other software as well, so check out their webpage, see if they have a plugin for your stuff. They also have an iOS app, which is a good fun to play around. Okay, I'll try to stay on topic. Let me get rid of any image enhancements, as that's the recommendation from Dehancer, and I'll click develop. That will bring us from 32-bit into 16-bit land, and it'll drop us into sRGB color space. The image size is 8000 by 5500, roughly. Now let's load the Dehancer plugin. And here we have a tiny problem of Dehancer failing to save my GPU preference. 
so I have to select it every time I load it. It's not a big deal, but an inconvenience. Sadly enough, here is where we meet a major problem. My machine isn't good enough for the plugin. Now I understand that my XPS 9700 is a three year old laptop by now, but it's no slouch. I've never had a complaint from software or even felt the need to upgrade. And I do 3D CAD, 3D modeling, rendering, um, photo developing, photo editing on this very machine. I work with 4K footage in Resolve and it's never been a problem. I've even merged panoramas that were made from more than 10 frames of this image size. Either way, after this point, the plugin stops working completely, which is a big no-no in my book. I can suffer through sluggishness and lag, and most of the time I need to work with image sizes that are this big or bigger. If the software simply gives up, I end up with nothing. Now after this error, I have to start over, because the plugin stops working completely, and I have to restart Affinity Photo. Let's open the file, and tick all the boxes, develop and I'll cut the image size in half. Let's launch the answer again, get through the GPU error, and there we have it. I quite like the interface, I might say. I do like the way the presets and film profiles are presented visually, as well as the nice toolbox of sliders we're all used to by now. What I don't like is that I have to manually expand the window to make it bigger. Um, there's no uh, maximize or full screen, but again, minor, minor issue. Okay, the first thing I like to do with uh, digital image software is check out the way it deals with image exposure. Let's make sure all the tools are um, disabled and I'll simply increase exposure. It, it, uh, I, uh, well, it breaks into cyan almost immediately. If you don't know what I mean, I have a pretty old video that will be a nice introduction for you. This is one of the downsides of Dehancer being a post plugin, and you're not supposed to do any major changes to the image. If we compare it to the same process in, for example, AGX, all I need to do is convert this image to 32 bit sRGB linear. Um, keep in mind this does not add any information, it just changes the way it is presented to the software and I'll add an OCIO transform from um, linear sRGB to AGX, disable the uh, uh, ICC transform, and I'll add an exposure. Now if I increase the exposure, you can see that the image stays intact for a lot longer, and uh, the exposure increases very gracefully. The moral of the story is, don't touch the exposure slider. So let's start by picking up the preset that matches our source image the best. Presets are a nice fast way to get you in the right ballpark from the get-go, and it gives you a nice steady ground to stand on. Um, Kodak Aero Color seems to be the perfect match for what I want to achieve. Okay, it got us close, but I can see that we need to increase the exposure and tweak the overall color balance just slightly. Now instead of increasing the exposure in the source section, I will do it in the expand section. Here we have a selection of color mode and Luma seems to be the more robust one, as it seems to somewhat protect the hue angles. There, much closer. I will keep the print section to last right after we tweak the overall colors we're getting from this image. Now the last thing I want to do is to reduce the color density a little bit so the red tint somewhat matches the red in our source image. This looks like a red umbrella. That's it. I'm pretty happy with what we've achieved in such a short time. I think it's close. Uh, but of course, additional work could still be done to greatly improve the accuracy. I know we haven't touched a lot of sections, but we will do that when we switch to DaVinci Resolve. Now in Resolve, we're going to give Dehancer its best chance to do its magic, and we're going to give it some footage that's already been processed with AGX. But first, I wanted to load up my favorite color test chart. It's a Rec. 709 Linear EXR, so it will put it through AGX. More info about AGX in the description. 
This will produce a lovely smooth and clean image. Then we'll just slap on Dehancer and play around with the settings. Let's get rid of the seemingly random default settings and let's play with the cool toys first. The first cool toy is Film Grain. Honestly, I think it's one of the strongest selling points of Dehancer. This is one of those things I mentioned earlier, where it mimics the film's behavior rather than its look. If you go to custom and set the grain to be quite coarse, uh, you will see that it actually looks like the image is made from grain, rather than the grain being applied as an overlay. I've played around with this concept in Blender uh, a while ago, and the impact of the image is really, really big. I think it's one of the key elements what makes film look so smooth, almost velvety, and Dehancer does a great job at replicating that feeling. Another awesome feature is halation. It works quite well right out of the box. Halation is what happens in film when a strong light hits the backing and bounces back into the red layer that's closest to the backing. It's usually unwanted, but in recent time it's been used and abused because it's one of the signature film telltales. Lastly, for this color chart, Bloom. Bloom happens when there's a bright source of light surrounded by relatively dark surroundings. Now the small problem is that Bloom is something that works best with linear data early in the pipeline. Low intensity areas shouldn't bloom at all, and high intensity areas should bloom a lot. Here's how this looks in Blender, for example. Sadly, Dehancer does not have access to such information, so it can only work with what it can. And everything above a certain threshold will appear bright to Dehancer, while in reality it should be a smooth increase in brightness. Okay, nerdy charts aside, let's work with some footage. I went out and shot some clips on my good old Sony A7R2. It's definitely not the camera to do video recording on, but you have to play with the toys you've got. This footage was captured as S-Log2 with Rec. 709 primaries, transformed using AGX, and then fed into Dehancer. I'm fairly happy with how these turned out, and I think video footage is where Dehancer really shines. It really tricks your brain into thinking that this might actually be film. If you made it this far, I suppose you've earned yourself a conclusion. Mixed feelings, really. Um, there are some major drawbacks and downsides to this plugin. To be positive, let's say there's definitely room for improvement. And I'm pretty sure I'll improve it will. But the question I ask myself is, if I had to work on a big project that required a lot of film look emulation, would I choose Dehancer? Absolutely I would. Well, maybe not the Affinity Photo plugin, but Dehancer for Resolve, for example, uh, provides convenient tools that make your footage look and feel film-like. It gives you a good base you can build your look off, and it gives you enough tools to customize it to your needs. All you need to do is manage your expectation and understand how to work within its limits. Now, will I use it for my day-to-day -day photography or video footage? That's unlikely. The two-step process of developing or forming an image, then using Dehancer to sort of undo and redo, reform the image, is not to my taste. I'm a nerd who likes to control his process pipeline from point A to point Z. Photography is still my hobby, and I adore its process, however inconvenient or, or, or complex it might be. So that's that. That's my honest take on the Hansa plugin. Subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, even though it's very unlikely I'll get to review another photography tool anytime soon. Okay, bye.